For years, .NET development was focused on Windows only. We still see the ripple effects of that focus in things like Visual Studio, which rely on Windows libraries in order to run. That means Visual Studio doesn't run on Mac or Linux. Now, Microsoft has provided us with an option in the C-sharp dev kit for the VS Code, but there's another option. In this video, I wanna introduce you to Rider by JetBrains. It's a great option for cross-platform development in C-sharp. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth look at technology, but sometimes you just need to quick answer the question, how do I do this? That's why I created this 10 minute training series. So let's start by looking at jetbrains.com at the slash rider page. This is where you would get Rider. You can download it from here. It is free in certain circumstances. And it's actually why I have held off until more recently to do this video because of the fact that I love the idea that they have a paid version. I absolutely do. I think it's important in order for tools to have an income stream that supports that tool so it doesn't go away. But I also don't love the idea of showing, especially new developers, an, a tool and say, well, in order to be a C-sharp developer, you have to pay for it. Because that means that what you start doing is saying, oh, to get started, I have to put all this money down before I even know if I'm a developer or not, or if I want to be a developer or not. I don't love that. I love letting people get in for free, get started using it, figure out if this is a career for them, and then figure out if they want the paid thing or not, which is why I love the fact that JetBrains did change their licensing. In fact, let's go to that licensing page here. They have a free non-commercial licensing, which means as long as you're not using it for commercial purposes, I mean, if you're learning, if you're using it to learn C-sharp, to practice C-sharp, if you're using it um, at a you know college or university, those things are all gonna be covered under the free and fair use. So you can use that for free until you start going to make money for it. It's a little different than what uh, VS Code with C-sharp dev kit does or, or Visual Studio does, where they say you can make money with it as long as you make less than a million dollars. This is a little different, but that's okay. It gets you in the door and gets you started without having to purchase anything. So I really appreciate that. But let's take a quick peek at Rider here. And this is what it looks like. So if we say new solution, we can we can create a console app, we can create a uh, class library, desktop apps of different types of desktop apps in here. Don't forget that. Uh, web with different types of de uh, web projects in here, services and unit tests and so forth. So basically the same stuff you can do in Visual Studio in a different look. So you can do the same things. One of the things that I like about this is the fact that I can do this in Windows, but I can switch over to my Mac and continue doing this in Mac. And actually let's do that now. So here's my Mac and I still have JetBrains. It looks very much the same. If I hit new solution, this looks mostly the same, but you'll notice a couple small differences. I do wanna point those out because this is not a JetBrains issue. It's going back to what I said at the beginning about how .NET for a long time was Windows only. And that is you won't see a desktop uh, project type over here because they, the desktop apps from Microsoft won't work on a Mac. You can't run WinForms, you can't run WPF. Even the .NET 9 versions of those, you can't run them on a Mac. And the reason why is because WinForms is short for Windows Forms. And WPF is an acronym for Windows Presentation Foundation. So those two have Windows in the name for a reason. They're tied to the Windows DLLs. They need those in order to operate, which means you can't run them on a Mac. Now, also .NET Framework doesn't run on a Mac, but there is some a little bit of wiggle room there. So if you go to a console app, and you drop this down where you see .NET 9.0, you also see .NET or version 4.8.1, which would be .NET Framework 4.8.1, which you might say, wait a minute, I thought .NET Framework only runs on Windows. And that's mostly true. But what's gonna happen if I select this is it says, hey, I'm gonna use Mono for that. So it's using Mono, it's not gonna get quite the same as running out on Windows. There might be some differences in how it works, but they'll try to get it work for, working for you if they can 
for console apps and a couple other small products, I believe. But for the most part, if you're on a Mac, you're going to be using .NET Core or .NET is what it's called now. And you'd be using 8 or 9 or whatever the, the latest version is of that. So this is what it's going to look like in Mac, which is basically the same thing as what it looks like in um, Windows. So we hit create. We're going to see that, you know, our app, come on here. My, there we go. Full screen. Um, so it looks very much like what we see on uh, Windows. I have a, a, a color theme here that's a bit more um, easy to read for on screen, but, you know, nullable strings, it works. It, it gives me my, you know, same IntelliSense and IntelliCode and all the rest. Um, so you can tab through things just like normal. Um, so this is Visual Studio like, but it's a different product. It's JetBrains Writer. The cool thing, like I said, this works on Windows. This works on Mac. This works on Linux. And it's going to work the same way for the most part, which means that you can feel, feel very comfortable switching between different platforms if you're using Windows for some things or Mac for other things. So another reason why you might choose JetBrains. Also, a lot of JetBrains is other tools built right into this with .NET memory and with FreeSharper and other things. If you like those tools, then they're built right into Rider and you can use those um, as part of this product. So that gets you started with Rider. One of the upcoming things that really excites me about what's coming in Rider is their new version. So let's come down here to Edge and let's go to coming in 2025.2. This is something that I've been waiting for for a while now. And if we look here at what the early access uh, build currently has, it has SQL project support via bundled plugin. So this to me has been the, the one thing that I've been wanting Rider to get. So Rider supports basically everything in .NET Core and, and all the things around it. it does Aspire, it does all the other things, but SQL projects has one thing that has been missing. Well, they're coming now with the uh, 0.2 release of Rider once that comes out. It's not out yet, um, but when that comes out, they're going to have the SQL support, which I really appreciate. Um, that's one of those project types that I think is, you know, undervalued for just how awesome it is. And I think that more people should know how to use that. So being built into Rider, it's going to be awesome. So that's Rider. Like I said, this is on a Mac. Um, obviously, I'm a Mac now, but it looks the same way on Windows. So check it out, try it out. And, and I, as I pointed out, this is free for non-commercial use. So check out that, um, that section to make sure that you it applies to you, but then go ahead and get Writer for free to get started with Writer if that is of interest for you. Now, if you're only on Windows ever, uh, Visual Studio is an awesome product and it's going to be my primary go-to because I am primarily on Windows. Um, and so that's where I live and I really like Visual Studio as my primary way of developing. But um, having this cross-platform ability is really nice with uh, Writer. Okay, so that's it. Check it out. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.